Hey everyone, to celebrate how far this channel has come, I'm going to be giving away an entire commander deck. All you need to do to enter is be subscribed, like the video, and comment what commander you would like me to build next on any video from the month of July. I will be picking the winner early August, so make sure you comment now. Thanks everyone, on the video. Today we're going to be taking a look at Aragorn the Uniter. Aragorn is a 5-5 human noble for red, green, white, blue that has some very cool abilities. Starting from the top, whenever we cast a white spell we create a 1-1 human token. Whenever we cast a blue spell we scry one. When we cast a red spell we do 3 damage to any opponent, and whenever we cast a green spell we can give target creature plus 4-4 until end of turn. Aragorn is a super powerful commander that can be built in a multitude of different ways. Anytime we cast a spell we get tremendous value, so we can really build him however we want. But for this particular deck list, I wanted to focus on two things, multicolored spells and humans. Now multicolored spells are obvious. If we cast a spell with multiple colors, we trigger multiple abilities, and because of that, nearly every single card in this deck list is multicolored. So if we cast a green-white spell, for example, we can create a soldier and give something 4-4. The reason I chose humans was, well, because we needed to take this deck somewhere. And humans allowed us to work with his white spell casting ability of creating a 1-1 human soldier. In addition to this, many human cards are actually multicolored, so it really all just worked together. Again, Aragorn can really be built however you want to, but I wanted something consistent, powerful, and fun, and that's what I found this did. Now this deck is absolutely packed with powerful multicolored cards, and it synergizes very well with the human tribal theme. In addition to this, Aragorn has 4 out of 5 colors, giving us the ability to pick and choose the strongest spells in magic. We don't have to make any sacrifices due to color limitations here, which is a huge advantage. Now this is probably the most fun deck I've made in a while, so without further ado, let's get into it. Finding a direction to take this deck was a little difficult at first, because Aragorn really is a blank slate of really good value. So I decided to hone in on three key strategies that I felt fit his theme the best. Our first key strategy is Recruit, where we will cast a powerful army of humans that each have their own unique effects. This is our way to build a powerful board state along our human tokens. Our next strategy is Support, where we will be playing cards that buff our humans in a multitude of ways. This will enable our humans to be strong enough to hopefully survive throughout the board state. Finally, our last strategy is Overcome, where we will be playing effects to strongly buff our humans for a round and enable us to swing out for the win. First up, we actually have another Aragorn card, Aragorn King of Gondor. Aragorn is a 4-4 human noble for 1 blue, red, white that has Vigilance and Lifelink and makes us the Monarch. When Aragorn attacks, we can select a creature that will become unable to block. For those that are unaware, Monarch is an emblem that allows you to draw a card at the beginning of your end step. However, if you take combat damage from an opponent, that opponent becomes the Monarch instead. There aren't many Monarch synergies in this deck, but there are a few. Then we have Call the Copper Coats. Call the Copper Coats is an enchantment for 2 and a white that costs an extra 1 and a white for each target beyond the first. When we cast it, however, we get a 1 1 human soldier equal to the number of creatures target opponent control. Since this is a white spell, we also get an additional soldier. We want to target this on someone who might be running a token deck, for example, to get tons of value. Fourth, Eurolingus is a sorcery for X red white that creates X 2 2 red white human creature tokens with trample and haste. This also makes us the Monarch if we damage one or more players this turn. General Ferris Rockrick is a 3-1 human soldier for one red-white that has hexproof and monocolored, and whenever we cast a multicolored spell, which will be pretty much every spell we cast, we get a 4-4 red-white golem creature token. This is a tremendous value card that we want to get out anytime we can. Glory Scale Viashano is a 3-3 Viashano soldier for one red-green-white that gets 3-3 whenever we cast a multicolored spell. We could typically expect to cast at least one a turn, making this a 6-6 at minimum. Hayar, Loyal Bodyguard, is a 3-3 human soldier for red-green. We can sacrifice him to make our creatures indestructible until end of turn. This can be helpful to protect us from a board wipe, or if we swing out and realize all of our creatures are about to die, we can make them stronger and unable to be destroyed. Horn of Gondor is an artifact for 3 that creates a human soldier when it enters the battlefield. Then we can pay 3 and tap it to create X-1-1 human soldiers where X is the number of humans we control. Essentially doubles our humans. King Darien is a 2-3 human soldier for 1 green white that gives our other creatures plus 1-1 one, one, and if we pay 3 green white we can put a 1-1 one, one counter on him and create a soldier. Then if we sacrifice him, creature tokens we control become indestructible. Again, this can be another great way to prevent board wipes, as we will have tons of 1-1 soldiers on the board that we don't want getting killed. Maya Bredegard Protector is a 2-3 human warrior for 2 green white that gives our other creatures 1-1, and when we play a land we get a human warrior token. 
Mantis Rider is a 3-3 human monk for blue-red-white that has flying, vigilance, and haste. Not bad for only 3 mana. Torrin's Fist of the Angels is a 2-2 human cleric for 1 green-white that is training, meaning when it attacks with a stronger creature, we get a 1-1 counter on him. And when we cast a creature, we get a 1-1 human soldier with training. Aomer King of Rohan is a 2-2 human noble for 3 red-white that has double strike, and it enters the battlefield with a 1-1 counter for each other human we control. And we become the monarch. In addition to this, Aomer does damage equal to his power to any target. And finally, we have Aon Shield Maiden. For two blue, red, white, we get 5 4 Human Knight with first strike. And if a human enters the battlefield before combat during our turn, we get two 2 2 red human knights with trample and haste. And if we control six or more humans at the start of our combat, we draw a card as well. Now let's take a look at our support. These can be cards that will prevent our creatures from dying, or cards that just buff our creatures as well. First up is Boros Charm, which for red and white we can either do 4 damage to a player or planeswalker, make our permanents indestructible, or give a creature double strike. Note, this is an instant so we can do it during combat or during another player's turn. Just make sure we leave red white up so we don't get board wiped. Coppercoat Vanguard is a 2-2 human soldier for 1 and a white that gives each other human we control plus 1-0 and ward 1, meaning spells are countered unless the controller of the spell pays 1 extra additional colorless mana. This does not counter our own spells though. Then we have Earnest Fellowship, which one in a white gives our creatures protection from its own colors, which in many cases will be multiple colors. This will prevent our opponents from using many removal spells on us. Knight of New Alara is a 2-2 human knight for 2 green white that gives plus 1-1 one, one to each other multicolored creature we control for each of its colors. In many instances, this will be giving 2-3, which means that our creatures will be significantly buffed. Kyler's the Guardian Emissary is a 2-2 human cleric for 3 green white that gets plus 1-1 one, one every single time a human enters the battlefield under our control and other humans we control get plus one one for each counter on him. This is a very quick way to buff our creatures, and since Aragorn's white ability, we will make tons of humans. Rhythm of the Wild is an enchantment for one red green that gives our creatures riot and makes them uncounterable. Riot is a keyword ability that means they enter with either haste or a one one counter. We can choose whichever one of these suits is best at the time. Rien Angel of Rebirth is a 5-4 angel for two red green white that has flying and gives our other multicolored creatures plus one oh. And, when a multicolored creature dies, we get it back in our hand during our end step. Safi Eric's Daughter is a 2-2 human scout for green-white that lets us sacrifice him to put a creature from our graveyard back on the battlefield. Samut Voice of Descent is a 3-4 human warrior for 3 red-green that has flash, double strike, vigilance, haste, and gives our other creatures haste. In addition to this, we can pay 1 white and tap her to untap another one of our creatures. Scion of Draco is a 4-4 for 12 that costs 2 less for each basic land type we control, so if we control all 4 lands it will cost 4. It has flying and each creature we control has vigilance if it's white, hexproof if it's blue, lifelink if it's black, first strike if it's red, trample if it's green. This is an amazing value card especially because we are having many creatures with multiple color types. This also means all of our soldier token Aragorn creates will have vigilance which is a huge plus. Sigarda Heron's Grace is a 4-5 angel for 3 green-white that has flying and gives yourself and humans you control hexproof. We can also pay to exile a card from our graveyard to make another human creature token. Surak Dragonclaw is a 6-6 human warrior for 2 green-blue-red that has flash, can't be countered, and makes our other spells uncounterable, and gives all of our humans trample. Tremendous value for 5 mana. Then finally we get to a classic card. Swiftfoot Boots is an equipment for 2 mana that gives a creature hexproof and haste if we pay the equip cost of 1. This is a great mana value card, and we will attach it to our commander most likely, just to get more value. Finally, we get to our last strategy, which is Overcome, where we will be buffing our creatures to swing out for the win. Cabaretti Charm is an instant for red, green, white that lets us choose one of the following. Dealing damage equal to the number of creatures we control, a target creature or planeswalker, giving our creatures plus 1-1 one, one in trample, or creating two 1-1 one, one citizen tokens. I personally would use this for the first or second ability, but mainly the second. Giving all of our creatures an extra damage and trample can lead us to doing tons of damage and maybe even winning games. Flying Crane Technique is an instant for 3 blue, red, white that untapped all of our creatures, and they have flying and double strike until end of turn. Make sure we cast this before blockers are declared though, because they can still be blocked before they gain flying. Taunt from the Rampart is a sorcery for 3 red, white that goads all creatures our opponents control and makes them unable to block. This will hopefully let us get a kill since our opponents can't block us, and they'll be doing tons of damage to each other. Finally, we have Titanic Ultimatum, which for 2 red, 3 green, and 2 white gives all of our creatures 5-5, five, five, first strike, lifelink, and trample. If this isn't a glorious way to end the game, I really don't know what is. 
And that will actually wrap up this week's deck list. Thank you guys so much for watching, and if you're interested in seeing more Lord of the Rings decks, please stay tuned. As always, if you decide to build this deck, please let me know how it does. I'd love to hear your stories, and don't forget to enter the giveaway. And of course, as always, stay cool y'all. Peace out.